Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the VPN service that's built into OS X Server. Now I've had a lot of requests for uh, covering VPN, so I thought I would do it this week. Now VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. And basically what that is is a tunneling protocol that allows you to create a secure connection from your remote Mac back to your server and all the information that goes across that connection then is encrypted, so it's, uh, it's safe to go back and forth. Now what VPN does is it makes it appear as if you are on your local network. Uh, it even assigns you a local IP address so that uh, basically you'll have access then to the services uh, that are available on your server uh, from a remote, connect, uh, re remote location, and all of that data is encrypted back and forth as well. Now, VPN is only available for a .private or a registered domain name, like a .com, a .net, a .whatever you have there that's registered on the Internet. Uh, it's not available on a .local network. So if you're using a .local uh, address name and you don't have v uh, DNS and all that set up, uh, VPN is not going to work for you. And so I just wanted to let you know that, that you need to have that kind of setup for that to work. Now, the beauty, like I said, of VPN is that it does allow you to appear as if you're on your local network, but with a couple of exceptions. The first thing is, is that Bonjour services do not work over VPN. So when you log back in as a VPN client, you will not see other computers that are on your local network all of a sudden show up in your finder. So all of those different services don't show up that way. You still have to connect to those uh, shares uh, using the file sharing service and using the, the ways that we taught you how to connect in the file sharing screencast that I did. So you can go back and take a look at that to see how you uh, are able to connect to those things. So I just wanted to let you know that Bonjour does not work because that's a confusion that a lot of people have when they're using the VPN service. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to configure VPN. As you can see here, we've got our access area and our settings area. Our service is offline because we haven't turned it on yet. Uh, again, like all of the services that are in Yosemite Server, you have permissions. You can set specific permissions as to who can use this service and have access to it. If you don't want to have it at the default of all users and all networks, you can come over here to Edit, and it allows you to change it to only some users and only specific networks that you want to connect over. Uh, for me, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to say all users, all networks, and make it available that way. Now, when we get down into the settings area here, you'll notice that we've got a configure VPN4. And if I just uh, click on this here, it's il either L2TP or L2TP and PPTP. So a lot of P's there. Uh, let me explain what that is. Those are two different VPN protocols that you can use uh, to connect to your server. And uh, OS X Server includes both of them. Now, L2TP is, is the more modern version. PPTP is what was used previously. But for those of you that might have some legacy machines or you're having trouble, with the L2TP connection, it just kind of gives you a backup to use as well. Now, L2TP stands for Layer 2 Tunneling Protocol, and the PPTP stands for Point-to-Point -point Tunneling Protocol, and that's what those acronyms mean. So what I'm going to do is just leave it at the default, the newer one here, uh, the L2TP, and that should be fine. Now, down here, you're going to have your VPN host name, and it'll give you your host name that you've set up already, and it'll also give you the green light if everything is good to go. That It's all set up, and that means I should be able to reach this service over the Internet because everything's set up the way that it should be. Now, what you'll see is when we begin to configure your clients, if you're on a .private network, uh, obviously your domain name here will not be registered outside the network, so we'll have to use an IP address. And so I'll explain that when we talk about how to connect from a remote client. Now, another thing we have added here is a shared secret. Now, a shared secret is basically a secondary password. It's one that you never have to enter again once you've entered it into this system. Uh, you'll enter it into your remote computers, and then that gives a second layer of protection that your computer or your server can compare up against to make sure that the computer that's trying to connect over VPN really is who they say they are, that they've actually got the password set up there. Now, if I just say show password, it gives you a default password here that uh, server sets up for you ahead of time. Uh, I just recommend changing that uh, to some kind of shared secret random password or one that you can remember. But you'll want to change that so you get that uh, up and running. Let's uh, uncheck that. Now, the next uh, setting we've got is client addresses. And you'll notice it says 31 addresses for L2TP. Let me just edit that for a minute. Because what this does for you is this basically um, shows you what addresses will be assigned to your machines when they connect via VPN. Now remember, because your remote machine appears as if it's on your local network, 
your VPN service will assign a local IP address to that machine so that it can be seen as if it's on the network. Now, the problem is, is we want to make sure that this starting range here is outside the range that your computer would normally assign through DHCP to your machines inside your local network. Because if we have an overlap, then we might have two machines trying to get the same address and your VPN service won't work. Now, the way you can tell what the starting point should be is if you go into Airport Utility, and you look at your uh, your DHCP range here, and you notice I've got a, a uh, 0.20 to 0.191. That's the range that my uh, airport that does my DHCP is going to be assigning addresses to my machines on the network. So as long as I start with this with a number that's beyond this 191, I'm in good shape. So if you take a look back at server here. Uh, you'll notice I'm starting at 224, so that's fine. That's exactly where I want to be. So you just want to make sure it's outside the range there. Uh, and you can see it'll assign as many addresses as you want. This is 31. I really probably don't need that many. I'm going to kind of take this number down quite a bit here and maybe go, I don't know, let's just go to 10 to be, to be safe. But whatever that range is, you can set the number of addresses that you'll assign that start at this number. Okay, so we're going to say OK. And you can see now we've got 10 client addresses that are ready to go. Now, down here we've got DNS uh, settings. You notice it says we have two name servers and one domain. If I go to edit that, you'll notice that I've got my uh, IP address of my server here, which is what it should be. That's the one that we assigned a permanent uh, reservation to. Again, if I go back into the airport utility, right, I've, I assigned my server this permanent address. That's the address I want to make sure is actually showing there because I want the server to be uh, shown inside the DNS settings. And then this is a secondary DNS address, and you can add as many as you want. Uh, this just happens to be an open DNS uh, address, but you could put in Google, you know, 8.8.8.8 .8 or whatever you want. Uh, you also have a search domains uh, to connect to clients. And so uh, right here, this is just my default search domain for my uh, provider, my ISP. But you could put in whatever uh, search domains you want for your connected clients to be the default. And you could put those in there. So I'm just going to say cancel because I didn't change anything there and just leave that alone. Finally, we've got this routes area here. And if I just say edit on this, what this allows you to do is to add additional routes to your VPN to other clients. So if you've got another server, uh, maybe on your network that has its own IP address or something like that, you would put it in here and that would allow your VPN clients to also uh, access that particular server as well that's on your network. So again, this really comes into play if you've got multiple servers or something like that. Uh, most home, home users don't, but if you do, that's where you would put that information in and add the IP address, subnet mask, and network type. So I'll say OK and leave that alone. And then finally, we've got this save configuration profile. And all of this is, is this is basically creates a, a file that you could send to your other machines if you wanted to, if you weren't using Profile Manager. And all they would have to do is double click the file and it would put all of your VPN settings on their computer so they can connect to your VPN. So it's just a convenient way of doing that. Now if I just say save file, I get this drop down, see it says mobile config, and then I could email that file uh, to anybody I wanted to. So I'm going to say cancel on that because I'm going to show you how to do it manually. Uh, so now that I got all the settings set up, all, all I need to do is throw the switch here to turn the service on. Again, it's going to ask me if I want to allow VPN access. It's going to ask me if I want to allow VPN access from the internet. And so I'm going to say allow because I do want that to happen. And so now it's going to open the ports that I need. And you can see the service is on. It's now available uh, through my server here. And VPN is set up and ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is go to a, another client and show you how to set up VPN on your client and show you what it looks like when you do connect. Okay, here I am over on my remote uh, computer here. And in order to add VPN uh, to your computer, uh, there's a couple ways you can do it. Obviously, if you've got Profile Manager, you can actually have the profile uh, sent to the uh, machine. It will automatically update it for you. Uh, in this case, that's, uh, that's not what we've got going on here. So we're going to actually do it manually just to show you how to do it. So what you want to do is basically come into the System Preferences area, and you want to go to Network. And inside the network area, if we just hit uh, one of these here, inside the network area, you want to click um, the plus button down here. And what we're going to add is we're actually going to add a VPN connection, just like it says right here. 
And so the type of VPN we need to select, and again, if you're using you know, PTP, uh, PPTP, you can do that, or Cisco. In our case, we're just using the L2TP over IPsec. That's fine. That's what we want. And then you can name the service, and you can call it whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can call it you know, my VPN, or uh, let's say, let's go home VPN, something like that. You can put your own service name on it, and that's how it'll show. And if we just say create, you notice that now we've created this VPN service over here in the sidebar. Now what we need to do is configure it for it to work. And so over here, you can see the configuration. It's either a default or you can add one. If I were to say add configuration, what it's going to do is uh, create a new configuration file if I wanted to do that. You know, if I wanted to create a file with everything I've got in here. Because I don't have it set up, I really don't need to do that, so I'm just going to cancel it. Uh, instead, right here is where I put my server address. Now, if you've got a registered domain name, th this is where you would put that. If you're using a .private address, instead of a registered domain name, you want to make sure that you put in the IP address, the public IP address of your computer so that you can get access to it. Because basically what's happening is, is your .private name isn't registered anywhere on the internet, so your machine doesn't know what server to connect to to get access to it. So that's why if you put in your public IP address, it goes right to your public IP address and knows your server. Okay, so that's the difference there. In our case, I'll just put in my server name. All right, now that I've got that in there. Then you want to put in your uh, account name. And so whenever you have your account name, this would be your, uh, your username. And so I'm just going to put in the uh, username. You want to make sure that you're using the short name, not the long name. So I'm going to put that in right now. And then we're going to go to our authentication settings and have this drop down. Now, what we're going to do for that is you want to put in the user password for that short name that you just put in. So whatever your password is on the server, you want to enter it right here. So we're going to put that information in. And then down here is where you would actually put your shared secret. So the shared secret that we created on VPN, you want to enter that right there. So let me put that in now. And once you have all that information in there, you just click OK. And now we've got everything set up and ready to go. Now, one thing I also do is I come in here and I usually check this box that show, says Show VPN's uh, status in the menu bar. It creates this little icon at the top here that allows me quick access to connect to VPN if I want to do that. You notice it says no... Uh, VPN's not configured. That's because we haven't saved our uh, configuration yet. So we're going to say apply. And that's going to save our VPN configuration so that now when I come up here, you'll notice I've got connect to home VPN. So it gives me the name that I've got here. And you can see it's orange because we haven't connected to it yet. I'm just going to get rid of that for a minute. So now all we need to do is test the connection to see if we can connect to the VPN. Now to test the connection, we just come in and click the connect button right here. And you'll notice it starts the whole connect process. And now you can see I am connected here. I'm starting to send and receive data. So I know now that my VPN is working, I'm connected. You see it's come up here uh, with the uh, green dot on it. And so everything's good to go and we're all set. Now I can disconnect from here if I want to. Or I can also do that up here in the status bar if I don't want to have system preferences up all the time. You see here it shows me how much time I've been connected. I can say disconnect and it will actually disconnect me from server and now I'm not connected to my VPN. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to connect to the VPN service. Uh, again, like I said, it's a great security feature to have if you're in a coffee shop or some unsecured network. It's a good idea to have a VPN connection to get you through so that you can actually uh, connect in an encrypted way. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.